Hey everybody, it's Renee from Tailspin Farm and I am hopping on today to do another um, yarn spinning tutorial and I apologize for the lighting. It is dark and dreary here today and I am actually filming this in the afternoon but we just don't have a lot of sunlight today so we are kind of, we seem to be hitting, um, hitting fall fast and hard right now. It's, you know, it's in the 60s and some days are nice, but we've had quite a few of these dreary days lately that make you uh, wonder what winter is going to bring. But we're going to do our best today. Um, we'll see what this ends up looking like, and we'll we'll do some um, spinning. And I just first I wanted to show you um, what I'm going to be spinning today is my crafty housewife yarns braid find my stuff. Um, I have already spun up. This is the one that I got last month from Crafty Housewife Yarns. And again, I apologize. The colors aren't as vibrant. I guess they're showing up okay. Um, this is the one I got in the month of September. August, September. Um, this was September's month, uh, September braid of the month. And I wanted to spin it thick. And so... Um, that's what I'm doing. I've already done one bobbin. This one had two braids, so I have the second braid that I'm going to show you how I spin it thicker. And then this week, I also received my October braid of the month, um, and I wanted to show you that. So, jewel tones seem to be all the rage right now because the, the farm day I did last weekend, um, everybody had jewel tones, and I bought a lot of jewel tones, so it seems to be the rage of dyers this time of year. Um, this is October's Raid of the Month Club, and that's pretty accurate. Um, and this one is, of course, these all come from small farms. Erin um, and her team work with all small farms. And this is Merino and Targi um, blended. And the colorway is Vivid to Dark Color Block. So I can see that. Um, I'm going to be spinning this up. I'm not sure. I'm trying to figure out what to do with um, all of these single skeins of yarn that I end up getting when I spin. I think I have a couple ideas. Um, one of them, which I'll probably end up doing a video on, I have with my Angora. Um, I like making hats out of the Angora because they're super warm. And they make great hats and I like to so I have a knitting machine I have the circular knitting machine the Addy one the larger one um, which some people would call this cheating um, I have justified that cheating because I spend so much time hands-on with between grooming the rabbits and caring for the rabbits and um, spinning the fiber from the rabbits and spinning all the other fiber that I get into yarn um, I justify using the knitting machine to make hats and things because of that. Um, it It's still knitted. Um, it just takes me a lot less time. And essentially, it all ends up being handmade anyways. And so what I do is I take my knitting machine, um, and I have another video on this. Um, I don't know if I completely did the hat or not, but there is another video on the Addy knitting machine. And I take it... Um, and I do basically a long tube, typically with two colors. So I'll start and I do about 140, 150 rounds. So halfway through, I'll switch it um, to the other color. And then all you have to do is um, feed it through the inside. So you end up with an inside out um, hat. And then you just have to close up the top. I typically put a pom-pom on the top when I get done um, but I'm going to make some reversible hats this year with it, too. Um, and so I think that's what I'm going to do with some of these skeins of yarn I have just from my spinning. Um, and I'm going to put uh, one side with Angora and the other side with my hand spun. So those are some of the ideas I have. When you get a braid, you, you can pull out one of the ends, and it ends up being pretty long. 
And typically what I do is I separate this out and then I do something called pre-drafting. So I pull these apart um, into smaller, um, easier to handle. And actually this one's going into all kinds of, this one's splitting into fours for me right now. And so that's how I handle spinning it. Um, so I will pull it apart into two or three or four, depending on how thick or thin I want to spin it. And then I let my hands do the rest. So let's um, get the camera resituated here. I still have my Ashford Traveler wheel that I've had forever and I love. Um, I am still waiting for my um, Spinolution Monarch, which I'm extremely excited to get. Um, I've talked about it in a couple videos now because I have been uh, better at making videos lately. And I have mentioned that I'm waiting for it. Um, like everything else in this crazy world we're in, they are backlogged. Um, it is a USA made product, which I am a huge fan of. Um, probably one of the, beyond the dynamics of what the wheels can do, um, which fascinate me. Uh, and I could show you that once I get it and why I like the different bobbin or the different um, way that it, it goes into the, the wheel than what I have. Um, but beyond that, it is made in the United States, which I, I want to support. And um, yeah, so I'm still waiting for that. So let me flip you around and I'll show you how I spin some thick yarn. Okay, and again, I apologize for the lighting today. I've got some of my extra lights on, but it still doesn't seem to be helping. Um, I talked about my bobbins in the last video too. I typically have at least something on my bobbin at all times. Um, I do not have any empty bobbins at this point just because I've, I'm spinning so much different fiber and different colors and things. So um, this one has just a little bit on it. So I'm going to use that as my leader. And I'm going to, if I don't get my light cord caught into my wheel and spin that up, um, I'm going to spin clockwise. I always spin all my fiber clockwise on all my bobbins, and then when I ply it, you reverse and go counterclockwise, and that's where you get the twist from. So, and that's how I remember. I think most spinners do it that way. Um, and I just take, how good you're gonna be able to see this today. I just take a little bit and get it started. And then I am spinning this thick, so I am actually, this, um, roving or this braid I have split it into fours right now and so I'm just spinning what I pulled off from the main braid to make this thick spun and I'm working my hands together um, I spin so I don't know if this is going to be reversed but my hand up closer to my wheel is my right hand um, the hand working the back of the yarn is my left I have a feeling that I spin more left-handed. I'm not sure. It's hard to always tell when you're watching videos of people spinning because you never know if it is, um, if it's flipped on the camera. But basically, to make a thicker yarn, you're just, and this is almost a thick, thin yarn, which I love also, but I'm trying to get this into a thicker. This would be considered like pencil roving size. And I am just, Peeling this as I go. Got it a little bit twisted here. Typically, I would. Um, there we go. I would pull all of this apart and have it ready to go as I'm spinning. But and that got over twisted. Sometimes you get over twist in your in your um, what you're feeding. So you got to watch that and you change your ratios and stuff to fix that. So to spin thicker, I'm not doing a lot of work with my hands because I've already done it by pre-drafting this fiber. Um, and then when I spin these two bobbins onto one another, you're gonna get um, a lot of what they call barber pulling. Um, and essentially it's that twist of colors. Ooh, I got this over twisted. This is a good example. I don't know if you get to see it in this light, but I, I'm spun too much right there. So. I need to release that a little bit, my tension. 
Um, so some people like the colors blending. Some people are adamant that they do not like um, color pooling or um, twisting on the yarn. I, I guess I don't have a preference one way or the other. I just love putting yarn together and however it happens to turn out is how it turns out for me. Um, I don't get overly technical with my yarn. Um, I am not an, a technical person when it comes to ratios or um, things like that. I just love the, the different yarns I can get just by spinning. So I'm pretty laid back in my spinning. Um, and what the yarn does is, is kind of what I let it do. Um, so, and you can see the twist is, I'm just gently pulling this apart and I'm putting quite a thick amount to, to um, spin right into the orifice. I'm just letting it go in. And some of them are a little bit thicker than others. I did, um, it, it's varied on the other bobbin that I did in regards to thick and thinness. So, um, but this will be a heavy weight yarn because it's going to be, by the time I ply it um, back onto the other one, it's going to be, it's going to be a very thick yarn. So this would be considered more of a chunky art yarn, which I was so thankful when I first started spinning. Um, art yarns were just kind of hitting the scene then, and that with trying to learn how to spin was a great thing. And when I teach classes, even today, I tell people, you know what, the beauty of this is, is that it's whatever you want it to be. I don't think, I don't think that there are rules on spinning. Um, people argue that, I'm sure. Um, everybody has their idea of what is legit spinning. For me, if my yarn is twisted and it makes a beautiful yarn and it stays together um, as a yarn, you know, it, you don't want it um, to be so either loosely spun or tightly spun that you can't use it as a yarn, then I think you're making yarn. I don't think there are rules to follow anymore. Um, so art yarns have done that for us, I think, which is great for people like me that just like to be creative. So that is all that I really do. Um, this is much simpler to spin a chunkier yarn because you don't uh, have to work at between your two hands as much. Um, essentially, you're you're pulling out the roving the way about the diameter that you want it to spin, and that makes the chunky yarn. So I'm going to finish this off and then start plying, and I'll hop back on to show you what I've come up with. Okay, I am back, different day, same yarn, and different spinning wheel. I've switched to my um, Ashford Kiwi to do this um, plying because it has a bigger bobbin, a little bit bigger bobbin. Um, I think this one is a, I don't, my uh, Ashford Traveler is a two ounce. I think this is a three or four ounce. So it's just slightly bigger, a little bit different setup. Um, so we're gonna take our two full uh, thick spun, chunky, we're gonna make chunky yarn out of our Crafty Housewife Yarns Braid of the Month Club um, braid for August. So we're gonna finish this one off. I'm just gonna show you a little bit on how I ply and finish it off and then I'll show you the end product. So I have a mostly empty bobbin in here and I'm gonna run it through and let's see, get it set up. There we go. And I'm gonna put my two bobbins again the this one has an attached um, lazy cake right on it so it is all set to go and 
I'm gonna tie this on to my leader. This is how I do it. I don't know if this is how everyone does it. Um, and we're gonna get this going. We need to get that big fat part started. I have to play with the tension. There we go. So it'll pull. And I'm just gonna work my hands so it's just blind. And I think I talked about in the beginning part of this video, um, I am probably going to make a hat out of this yarn. I haven't totally decided. I wanna get some hat, hats made up here soon. Um, I, have a, I have at least one fall show coming up that I know of right now um, that I'll be doing. And it's always that's a, always a good time to sell hats. And then I have some of your, my stuff at a local place here and um, they've often sold my hats there. So that's probably what this is gonna go into. I haven't decided if I'll do it with Angora or just keep it um, with this being so chunky. I may not put it with anything. I may just make it, um, make a hat all by itself. I get so used to my Ashford Traveler. This is a different, uh, every wheel that you spin on, um, if you've ever had the opportunity, every wheel has a different feel about it. How it um, spins and works. This one, the um, pedal, you have to you have to work it further up on the on the pedal. So this is more of working with my toes um, than with my um, my full foot on my Ashford Traveler. It's just a different spin. Um, I my favorite is my Ashford Traveler right now, and like I've mentioned several times, I do have a Spinolution Monarch coming, um, and I know that the the Spinolutions are different very different types of technique for spinning. Uh, not technique, but just the way they spin. Your feet are put in different different places than um, traditional wheels. So the pedals are set up a little bit different. Uh, so I've never tried one, so I'm excited to get mine and see how it's gonna feel and work. Plying is really relaxing to me. Um, because essentially all of the work with your hands is, is finished. You don't have to be too concerned. When you're when I'm spinning, um, I do have to pay attention, especially if you're being very consistent about it. You have to pay attention to how much fiber is going up through your hands and um, what it's looking like. So I pay much more attention when I'm spinning. When you're plying on, the work is already done. And so essentially you're just um, making sure everything goes onto the bobbin. So it's it's very relaxing. This is going to be fairly thick and chunky. And this is, this did end up being, maybe not unintentionally, but this did end up being a uh, thick and thin yarn to some degree. It's not just straight chunky. Um, some techniques I have to focus on more than others because I don't do them often. Um, I don't spin chunky yarns often. I get so used to spinning my Angora, which is spun basically pretty thin. Um, although I, you can spin Angora um, thicker. I'll do a video on that one of these days and show you uh, what it looks like when you spin Angora really, really thin and what you can do with it and medium, thin, uh, medium spun um, and what you can do with that and then show you some thicker spun Angora and how that looks and what the makeup of it is. But most of my stuff is spun pretty thin um, all the time. So I 
think you get in a groove with that and it just, it becomes what you do. I'm hoping with these braids that I'm getting every month from Crafty Housewife Yarns, um, hoping to do some fun stuff with them. I do love the idea of art yarn and art spun yarn. Um, I think it's fun. I think you can be creative with it. I think it leaves room for errors that maybe a traditional spun yarn doesn't. Um, but that's the beauty of spinning now. I mentioned that earlier. The, the idea that you can spin pretty much. Um, you have to remember what you're going to use it for. But you can spin pretty much how you want to spin and what you want it to look like to create your own yarns. And again, there are things that you you wouldn't want to do with a big, thick, chunky yarn. Um, although some people break those rules too. So I guess I guess sometimes I like the rule breakers when it comes to yarn because it it opens up the doors for what you can do with it. All right, I'm going to finish this off and then I'll hop back on. Okay, guys, I have finished my big stuffed bobbin full. These were the two, um, two smaller bobbins spun thick and thin essentially, but it ended up being a really chunky yarn. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on, again, my Lazy Kate pins are right on my spinning wheel here. I have my Nitty Knotty. If you ever hear Nitty Knotty and don't know what it is, this is what it is. Um, mine's a wooden one. They make um, PVC pipe ones. Essentially, it's just a way to twist your yarn around to make um, your skeins. So you go back and forth. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to um, set the twist in my yarn. I think I will probably wet it down and then um, let it dry to set the twist. And that's it. The yarn is finished. So once you uh, get everything on here, you can see the colors better too, the variations on this. Um, with there being so many colors. I like how it turned out. It didn't, um, sometimes with this many colors, doing it the way I did it, it ends up, um, the color, I guess, pools too much and it just ends up sort of a dull tone or a dull color because it just doesn't um, pop. But this turned out pretty good. I like how it turned out. There's enough, enough um, color variance in it that the colors do pop on it. Let me get a little bit more of this done and then I'll show you what it looks like. And of course over on Instagram, I usually always post pictures of my finished yarn. You can see it there. So if you follow me on Instagram, um, you'll be able to see some of these yarns that I make. My bobbin is spinning. So this, and hopefully we've had some re really dreary weather here. It's just been raining for days. So this is what it ended up looking like. So hopefully the color is coming through all right. Um, and this is what it looks like on your Nitty Knotty. Typically what I do is I tie um, a couple of uh, spots off and then take it off here, or to take it off here, I should say. So that is what I ended up getting off from my braid. Um, I'm not sure how much this is yet, uh, but I will let you know. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do like it, please click the like button, of course, and subscribe to my channel. Um, and you can follow me over on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I am Tailspin Farm over there. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks.